and welcome to church today. It's great to have you with us. It is the second weekend of Advent. I don't know how you're getting on with your little windows, but I'm remembering every day with my cardboard calendar with chocolate inside. I'm remembering each day to get up and to open that. But actually, we're only opening that once we've looked at the church online Advent calendar. If you don't know about that, um, have a look on the Facebook page or on the website and you'll find information there with different people each day reading a little bit of the Bible as we prepare for Christmas. So we watch that and then we have our chocolate calendar. But it is the second weekend of Advent and last week our theme was hope. This weekend our theme is, is peace. So in a moment we're going to go and light our candles so you might want to have your advent crown if you've made one in front of you. If you didn't make one perhaps just have a candle and then you can light that together as a family or in your household. But today our candle is going to be lit for us by Rob and Sarah, Josh and Ben. So we're going to go and do that, they're going to lead us in prayer and then we're going to continue in worship with that new song that we had at the beginning last week. Today we light the second candle, which is peace. Lovely. Ooh. Which is peace. So that's hope from that's last week. From last week, yep. And then this is peace. Ah. Prince of Peace, reveal yourself to us today. We need peace in our lives, our homes, our families, our church and our whole world. Help us to slow down and seek out the peace you provide, so we may become peacemakers for ourselves and others. In your name, Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. 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 Stand 
Oh dear, Flora, you don't look very happy today. No, you actually look really very cross. Do you want to tell me why you're cross? Ah, okay. So Flora's cross today because Frankie has got a new alarm clock and I think we just heard it a moment ago. And it's making you cross, isn't it, that it keeps going off? Has it been waking you up in the morning? And that makes you a little bit cross and a little bit sad. Now, our story today is all about somebody who made lots and lots of noise, a bit like Frankie's alarm clock, but actually that it was for everybody's good in the long run. So why don't we go and hear our story, which I think Rob and Josh are going to read to us, and then we can have a little bit of a think about it, Flora, because I don't like it that you're so cross. This reading is from Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. John the Baptist prepares the way. This is the beginning of good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Long ago, Isaiah the prophet wrote, I will send my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A messenger is calling out in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appears, appeared in the desert. He preached that people should be baptised and turn away their sins. Then God would forgive them. All the people from the countryside of Judea went out to him. All the people from Jerusalem went too. When they admitted they had sinned, John baptised them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made out of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and honey. And here is what John was preaching. After me, there is someone coming who is more powerful of it than I am. I'm not good enough to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. So in our reading, we heard all about John the Baptist, and we've talked about John before, haven't we? But how John went ahead of Jesus, telling everybody about him. Now, that doesn't sound very peaceful, does it? But Jesus is referred to, Jesus gets called the Prince of Peace. And our theme today is all about peace. But it's funny, isn't it, to think about how somebody going ahead and making noise can be bringing peace. Is that strange? Now, the alarm clock is quite similar, really, isn't it, in a way? That Frankie's alarm clock, I've got it here, that it goes off really early in the morning, doesn't it? and you're still tired, and you're still sleepy, and you're still wanting to just kind of stretch your way out of bed very, very slowly. But the problem is, that isn't really very good for you, is it, in the mornings? Because, Flora, you're not very good at getting out of bed, are you? You're not very good at just getting up when I've told you to. You're not very good at getting dressed, ready for frog school. And so we end up rushing around at the last minute and everyone ends up a bit cross and it's really, really unhelpful and nothing goes right. Is that right? Yeah. Now the problem with God's people before John and before Jesus is that actually they're a bit like you in the morning. 
that they weren't really doing what they were told and they were just drifting through and that but actually they were in trouble and things were not working well for them so John came and John was a bit strange we've talked about him that he ate funny things for his breakfast locusts and that kind of thing and wore funny clothes and that he was just in some ways quite strange we would think that he was quite strange and that he kept talking about the one who was coming and that the one who would save them would come and that Jesus was coming and that he was baptizing people it was all quite unusual and he probably wasn't very quiet about it if I'm honest but he wanted to share with everybody who Jesus was so that when Jesus came they all knew and they were all ready for him just in the same way that your alarm clock or Frankie's alarm clock actually because it's not yours is it no Frankie's alarm clock which is here that that goes off to get you ready for the day that's ahead of you and that it might not feel very peaceful at that moment when the alarm clock's beeping and it's going off but then you've got plenty of time to get ready that things are calm and you can get ready, um, ready for frog school without having to rush around and without everything going wrong. Do you understand that, Flora? So sometimes for it to be peaceful, there's sometimes some noise and some activity that goes on before. So like the alarm clock, you might feel that it's destroying your peace, but actually in the long run, it's bringing you peace, isn't it? Because you're not having to rush and you can have your breakfast and you can get ready. And in the same way, John came, that he made lots of noise and he told people that they had to change. And that was quite a big thing, quite a difficult thing, that they had to change their ways, that they had to turn back to God and follow him and that Jesus was coming. So I don't think we should be so cross about Frankie's alarm clock. OK. Should we try harder not to be cross? And then if we get ready for it, then we know it's coming every day and we can get up that we can open our little doors on our advent calendar, we can watch the video on the online, ca uh, online ca calendar, and we can have our little tiny piece of chocolate every day, because we'll have plenty of time. Does that make sense? That actually things are better for us because we'll be prepared, and in the same way, God's people were prepared for the coming of Jesus because of John and all that he did. Okay? Yeah, you've calmed down now, that's good. So whilst you carry on calming down, should we go and see what Lucy's got for her craft today? Because I think she's got, it's quite a good craft today for everybody, that, a craft that we can send to other people. Hello, my name is Lucy and today we're going to make nativity scene cards. First you need to print off your nativity pieces. You can draw your own but it is a lot easier to print them. There is a link in the YouTube link. Print them onto an A4 paper or card. Colour them all in. Next, fold your piece of A4 card in half from top to bottom. Turn it over and then glue your envelope like this. Cut out all of your nativity pieces. Glue your stable onto the front of your card.
Decorate your card and then write a Christmassy message on the front and inside. Finally put all those loose pieces into the envelope. You can now give your nativity scene card to a friend or you can use it as part of your own decorations. Today we have made a nativity scene so that we can use it to remember the Christmas story. What, why, why not retelling the story yourself using your nativity card? We hope you enjoy making your nativity scene card today. We would love to see pictures. Have a great week. Bye!
happened in the race between the cabbage, the tap and the tomato? I don't know. The cabbage was ahead, the tap was running, and the tomato was trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> snowman embarrassed when he was spotted rummaging through a bag of carrots. He was caught picking his nose. Our second song today is another new song called Ring Out the Bells and again it's probably going to be a bit quick um, for you to kind of follow along with but it's a nice easy one and again we're going to have that again probably in two weeks time um, as a song that we're going to sing together. So why don't you stand up wherever you are because I realised that earlier on we didn't have a stretch and now we've been still for quite a while I think so why don't we have a nice stretch now so stand up wherever you are and stretch up nice and high and wiggle your fingers. Stand on your tiptoes if you can, as high as you can. Stretch out in front and wiggle your fingers. And then, one at a time, don't try and do both legs at the same time. Lift up one foot and wiggle your toes. And lift up your other foot and wiggle those toes. As we stand and we worship together.
So Frankie, we've come towards the end of our service, but it would be wrong of me to just not point out your really funky new hat. Is this your Christmas hat? Yeah. And actually, you've been wearing this this week, haven't you? Because you've been helping me to do some other filming. Um, so we have to keep an eye out for Frankie's hat from now on. But are you excited about what's coming up over the next couple of weeks, Frankie? Yeah, I'm really excited too. Couple of notices for you. Um, that next week, next Sunday afternoon, is our in-person all age services. Now, I'm really sorry to say um, that those are both full now, so we can't have anyone else book into those. But there will still be an online service, as there has been for the last however many months. Um, so you can tune into that from eight o'clock. But if you're coming in the afternoon, perhaps don't tune in at eight o'clock because lots of the bits of the services will be exactly the same and we don't want to spoil it for ourselves, do we? No. Next notice is on the afternoon of the 20th at 3.30. Um, we're going to be having church family carols, which will go live on YouTube. Um, we've done some recording of some readings and we've got some familiar carols um, that we're going to be joining together for. Um, it's not just for children, it's for, for the whole church family, whether you're young or whether you're that little bit older it's for everybody so do join in with that another notice is that if you haven't booked your chris stingle bags yet um, for collection on christmas eve please do get on and do that because at the end of next week we're going to be counting up how many oranges we need so we can start ordering those so check out um, the website because the link is there or the Children and Families Facebook group because you'll find it there too. But thanks to those of you who have already booked those. And the last message is kind of leading on from that is just do have a look at the website. Do have a look at the Christchurch Chill Web well website and have a look at the Christmas page. So you've got some idea of what's going on over the next number of weeks. I've talked about the float. Um, and you'll have to have a look on the maps to see if they're coming near you. And Frankie, we're going to go and see the float, aren't we, when it comes um, by the end of our road. So do do that. But there are going to be a couple of slides at the end with information about these things too. So as we come to the end of our service, we've been thinking about peace. What is it really to have peace? Is it just quietness? No, it's not quietness. Because as we talked about, the alarm clock your alarm clock, because you've been in quite a lot of trouble with Flora, haven't you? Yeah, well, I think we've got that sorted. But the alarm clock brings peace in that it wakes you up, and then it's quite loud, isn't it, as it wakes you up. It doesn't feel very peaceful. But then once you're awake and you're ready to start the day and you can kind of prepare for things in good time, that brings not quietness, but it brings a sense of peace to your mind and to your heart. And it's quite similar to how um, John the Baptist came to point the way to Jesus. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the ultimate bringer of peace for each and every one of us. So as we kind of finish thinking about that, let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That peace isn't just about having quiet moments it's not just about not having noise, but peace is something so much more. Peace is something, that sense of calm that we can have um, in ourselves. So we just pray for more of those moments, more moments to be prepared for what you would have us do next in each day. That we're so excited in this time of waiting, waiting for Christmas, even in this strange year with different things going on. But I just pray now that instead of it being frantic busyness of wrapping and shopping and visiting and, and all of these things, that there would be moments of peace, moments of knowing who you are at the centre of all of those things, um, especially this week. So we ask that you would go with us, go with us into the many things that we're going to be doing, into the excitement, into the joy, um, but bring peace into those moments too. Amen. Amen. So we've got a busy week and I expect you've got a busy week too. So be assured of our prayers for you. But until next week, when we're going to be seeing, seeing some of you in person and seeing some of you online, have a great week. Bye bye.